Hello! Howdy. Welcome to Powerful Nonsense, episode 114. Cranking them out. They are just, they just keep coming. I just realised that it's going to look like I've been wearing the same shirt for the <laughs> last two weeks. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Out. Yeah, that's a very distinctive shirt as well, so people aren't going to be I like, know. oh, they're going to remember that one. Maybe I just like time. this is my special podcasting shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> I mean, I like it, but it's... Yeah. It's my summer shirt. It's, it's the one that like, when you're like on holiday, you can like with your sunglasses on and, <laughs> you know. Anyway. Yes. Um, I'm going to call you, I'm going to call you out on the episode. Why? Jem is experimenting with veganism. Oh my God. He's going there. I'm going there. I've gone there. You've I've gone, gone there. there. Yeah, I am. And what? Well, it's, it's disrupting my view of you, Jem, because you've always loved me. <laughs> See, this is the problem with people and entrepreneurship. <laughs> People always... This is the thing that you're... for. Actually, this is a good point here. This is your I'm, brand. I'm going to go into something now. All right. When you go into entrepreneurship, people will be like, wait a minute, especially all your nine to five friends, they're going to be like questioning you like, what are you doing? Why are you changing? Why are you become a different person? This is what happened to me. You start doing something different. <laughs> I feel like I've really struck a nerve. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to give a point because I think it's really important. Okay. When you change something about you, especially when you've got your close unit of friends, suddenly, especially the same with me when I did entrepreneurship, they start thinking, who the hell is this person? And then then. <laughs> What happens is it then flips onto them and then they start questioning what they currently do and whether they whether it's good or bad and then they feel that. So like a lot when it comes to veganism, I'm not saying I'm totally vegan, but then you think, well, what, just because you're vegan now you're better than me? And I think people get that with the whole Mate, entrepreneurship. I think, I think you're reading into it too much because I'm don't. i not looking at you thinking, not like, like that. are you better than me? I'm just like, like, what's happened to you? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But people don't like when other people change habits and I think that's, oh, the, yeah. that's the thing people... <laughs> if, if you're so used to doing something consistently, when something changes, I think suddenly people are questioning it. Like people, even my dad, like trying to tell a Turkish dad that you're not eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how tough that is? Um, my, and my dad's I'm, like, Jeff. I'm so sorry, guys. I've really opened up a can No, no, no I think here. this is just good to riff on. It's funny, actually. <laughs> because actually, um, but yeah, like my dad was like, what, you're not eating meat now? He goes, Jem, I know you're into health, but this is just a step too far. <laughs> so I think whenever you make any change in your life, remember that everybody around you is going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? But you just got to do you, and that is it. <laughs> we should probably get into the episode now. Well, it's almost relevant what you're saying, though, to the episode. But yeah, just as a... Jem has assured me it, this is just an experiment. He's testing it out so that he can poo-poo it later on, right? Maybe, who knows? Maybe, unless he is going to turn vegan on us. But he makes the best burgers in the world, and what am I going to do? I can make you a meaty burger. Or we can switch it to bean if you want. No bean burgers. No. <laughs> I want a meaty burger. All right. Anyway. If someone's just listening for the first time. So this is not a dietary podcast. It isn't. <laughs> this is not a vegan podcast. We have people for that. <laughs> True, we do, actually. We do. Um, this is more about living life on your terms podcast yes. like what i did there so today intros intros oh Quickly, my god we've go. got we're three minutes in and nobody knows our names and i'm already sweating from ranting <laughs> <laughs> i am wayne ingram i am jem yildiz and we are vegan extraordinaire no no i'm joking <laughs> no i'm not vegan anyway anyway we are the powerful nonsense crew here's a blood sucker <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, today, while we're like nearly four minutes in and we haven't even talked about what we're going to talk about. Yes, let's I do this. Kind of worms. So, um, a lot of people are getting into entrepreneurship at the moment. They are. Not a lot of people. Or they are thinking about or it. Or they're thinking about it. It's very like, it's the new thing to be an entrepreneur. It's the cool it's thing. It's the cool thing to do. We're entrepreneurs, sidepreneurs, whatever you want to call us. <laughs> and, you know, we talk about entrepreneurship a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we're very aware that there's a little bit of FOMO going on. Definitely. For those that aren't down with the kids, like me and Jem, <laughs> <laughs> FOMO is fear of missing out. Yes. So a lot of people are thinking, wait, should I get in on this entrepreneurship thing? Because mm -hmm. everybody seems to be living the high life. Supposedly. Supposedly. So we're here to discuss entrepreneurial FOMO. And if you are suffering from it. Are you suffering from entrepreneurial FOMO? <laughs> Maybe. That should be like, we should do that as a little trailer for the episode, I think. That'd we'll be take good, that actually. Little there. Put that onto Facebook. Yeah, a little see? gif. Yeah. A gif. Are you suffering from entrepreneurial... I've done it once already. I'm, when am I doing that? Once again? enough. Once, once is enough. Anyway. So, let's 
start. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you before we hit record, you kind of were talking about this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, as you say, like, loads of people are starting to see this entrepreneurial thing's kicking off. People are saying to you, like, oh, you know, I'm seeing your social media posts. You don't seem to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how are you making your money? Like, am I missing out on something here? Yeah, I just think nowadays, especially, you've got a lot of articles being shared. A lot of people are starting, like, their little side gigs or selling stuff on the side. And I think now yeah nowadays especially people are just seeing that the opportunity is out there to be mm. entrepreneurial and mm-hmm. i think this is totally because of the internet we don't have to go into that we've 100%. discussed it people are just seeing you can see how many people now on linkedin are suddenly changing they were at a company now they've gone freelance and now they're getting their own clients and i think what's happening is is obviously people are kind of which is why we actually started this podcast because we just mm-hmm. wanted to make people aware that actually nine to five is not the only way to spell yeah. success really does there that is, mean we're going to go out of business soon Potentially, but that's the idea. You kind of want to just show people there's a second option, and I think that's what we're trying to do. And I think mm-hmm. nowadays it's become, especially with millennials, especially. I think we've been we're so hardwired. Well, we've been hardwired actually to follow that old system, and now the internet's opened everything up, and we're actually questioning: Do I actually want to work in an office nine to five? Mm-hmm. Do I want to have a train journey? Do I want to have to be sat at a desk for a certain period of time before I can go home? Do I want to ask permission to go on holiday? All these sort of things. Uh-huh. And I think what's happening is people are being like actually. Well, they're seeing entrepreneurship as this alternative option that maybe mm-hmm. gives a little bit more freedom. You still can earn good money and you can be in control of your life. And I think what's happening is people are thinking, yeah, well, actually, I want to do that. But then suddenly I'm in my job. I've got a lot mm-hmm. of responsibilities already. Do you know what? I'm too busy to even think about starting or, I mean, I was speaking to my friend yesterday and he's working like 10 hour days and he's saying like, it's, it's unsustainable. He doesn't have a life. But he said at the same time, I haven't got the time to stop doing that. Yeah, right. I've That's got, a bit of a trap, isn't it? Exactly. And I think what is what the problem is there is that suddenly you are maybe looking on Instagram at people who are maybe freelance or entrepreneur and you're thinking, what the hell's going on? I'm at my desk for 10 hours a day. I've got to sit on the train sweating my balls off. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys are Literally living... Literally and metaphorically yes, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> and these guys are like pissing about making a podcast or kind of are here, there, and they can go play tennis in the afternoon. And I think what's happening is obviously that's creating this chasm where people are saying, wait, is this possible? And I think that's really the whole impetus of this of this actual episode is mm-hmm. to figure out like, is are you are you kind of thinking about entrepreneurship in a serious way or are you just kind of looking at it like, oh, well, that would be nice if I had that life, but maybe it's not the right thing for you. So uh-huh. we're going to sort of jump in, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we kind of touched on this on the last episode, last week's episode, uh, 113. Um, and it's kind of this thing of like entrepreneurship can sometimes look incredibly easy. Yes. It can really look easy. Like if you were to look at our social media posts, I'm sure you'd be like, what do these guys actually do? <laughs> um, because it looks easy, right? Yeah. Plus, like, that's the bits that are appealing. People want to see the bit where you're playing right. tennis or the bit where you're on <laughs> holiday or the bit where you're in a cool office because you've uh-huh. got a cool meeting or something like that. Uh-huh. Um, but actually, it's not that easy. And I think also sometimes you might just be better off sticking with your day job. Mm-hmm. Like, it is a lot of work to actually make it sustainable. Like, sure, like, we're earning money off of the podcast, but if we sit on our laurels and just kind of expect that that's going to keep happening yeah. continuously for the rest of our lives, yeah. we'd be idiots and we will go out of business eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, so we have to keep working and keep pushing to try and make sure that we've got cash flow. Um, so, whereas if you have a day job, you're working in a nine to five or, you know, these 10 hour days or whatever. Yeah. Okay. You, that there are going to be certain sacrifices there. Like you're not just going to be able to go up and go out for lunch just cause you, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning because you think actually I'll do I'll start work at three yeah um you know I mean that's a really odd looking day but <laughs> but the the point is you won't have that freedom but it means that you don't have to worry about where the bills are coming from because your bills are covered you don't have to worry about constantly finding those new clients unless of course you know you're in sales or whatever whatever your day job is but the point is those stresses aren't going to be there Because you've got that job, you can show up, you can do your work, you can clock out at the end of the day, go home and chill. 
Yeah, and I think it also has that sort of grass is greener effect. People totally always, does. when you're in your job or maybe whatever you're doing, like you will look outside and see only the best bits of everybody else's life because suddenly you're not having a good time. But then that's not the that's not the real reason for why you should get on entrepreneurship. Yeah. You shouldn't get into it because everybody else looks like they're having a whale of a time <laughs> <laughs> while you're in the office. So I think that's a really important thing to consider is like if you're, and as well, I think sometimes entrepreneurship can make people unsatisfied with their regular mm. job. And that's the thing. It's not, there's nothing superior about being an entrepreneur Absolutely. over having a job. Like if you're comfortable and you actually enjoy your job, you have, you enjoy doing it, you work yeah. long hours, but it works for you. You still have a life, you still can cover your bills and you don't have to have that stress of maybe feeling like, mm-hmm. okay, I need to make sure I get a new client or uh-huh. those sort of things. Then that's fine. And I think that's what I want to make really clear to people is that, yeah, entrepreneurship can be fun it forces you to grow there's loads of aspects of it that I think are incredible which I in some cases I don't think maybe a nine to five will give you and I think that's where that sort of what people call risk or the kind of fear factor of entrepreneurship or taking on new challenges I think that's for me and you especially Mm -hmm. I think for both of us is that idea that the personal growth that you're forced into through entrepreneurship is what I admire the oh, most. Absolutely. Whereas I do think sometimes with a nine to five, it's a lot easier to play it safe. You can't do that with entrepreneurship because you have to keep adapting to the marketplace. You mm-hmm. have to keep maybe finding new clients or retaining current <laughs> clients. So yeah, yeah, I think there are things to consider as well. Like don't get delusional, don't get those rose tinted glasses because you're seeing everybody else is having a whale of a time whilst being yeah. an entrepreneur because maybe your life is, is fine as it is uh-huh. and it's just that maybe you're just seeing people's pictures on Facebook or whatever, going on holiday, and <laughs> yeah. that's not the full picture, really. No, it's not. And actually, funnily enough, like one of the hardest things I find about working for yourself, uh, which I think that if if somebody could provide... The, it's, it's not, it's all about self-discipline, but like <laughs> the thing about a nine-to-five job is, you know, you show, show up at the office, you've got somebody going, I need this done by this time, yeah. and you get it done, right? And then you leave the office and it's all nicely structured and nicely packaged. You don't really have to think about it. You don't really have to kind of go, oh, should I play Xbox for an hour? No, 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 no. I'm going to carry on with my work, right? You don't have that. Whereas with entrepreneurship, because you've got that freedom, because you are working for yourself, you've not got somebody over your shoulder going, I need this done now. Mm-hmm. Um, you're then, there's this battle of going, of this procrastination, you kind of go, oh, well, I could just take a little bit of time off now and I'll come back to it later. But knowing full mm-hmm. well that actually later you'll be tired and actually think, oh, actually, you know, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. And then mm-hmm. tomorrow becomes tomorrow becomes tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then before long, you're stressed because you've got to get this work to this client and you haven't done it because you haven't had your client going, where's this stuff until like the day of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have got that battle. So, I mean, there are definitely upsides to, to having a sort of normal job, a day job. Definitely. And I think people look at the entrepreneurship thing and go, look at how much freedom they've got. But that freedom comes with a huge challenge mm-hmm. of, of knowing that if you don't work, mm-hmm. your bills won't be paid. Whereas actually you can kind of, you you shouldn't, but you can kind of get away with coasting a little bit sometimes <laughs> at a day job. Oh, you definitely can get you away with coasting. You definitely can get away with coasting. Whereas with being an entrepreneur, if you coast, you don't make as much money. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and if, so if you want to, if you want to bring in good amounts uh, of money, you got to work your freaking ass off. Yeah, and I think just I think nowadays, obviously, because of social media, everything is so available. We, I think, the problem is, is that a lot of people are now just seeing opportunities like opened up humongously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that obviously is going to create friction. People uh-huh. just see all these possibilities, and, and so everybody wants to kind of which way should I go? There's so many opportunities. Uh-huh. We even know ourselves, like when it comes <laughs> to talking about business. Do we start doing like talks? Do we start selling a product? So there's right. the opportunity is massive. And I think that's what creates a sort of entrepreneurial FOMO because you're kind of like, okay, which one do I go for? And I think that's what is people maybe who are in like nine to five jobs are also kind of, I don't know, that's what's appealing because there's so much opportunity, but you don't do anything. But then you know that, oh, that seems to be the thing. I always right. wanted to be an artist, but now I'm in this job and it can get a bit messy. <laughs> yes. And a little bit overwhelming as well. Uh-huh. Very much so. And I think that's what, as you kind of alluded to about like, okay, we've got the podcast that's kind of ticking over, but it's not going to make enough to pay our bills just yet. So how can we, and then you have this challenge of going, okay, well, how do I make more money and how do I make it so I could live off it? Whereas if you show up to your day job, you'd show up, you leave, yeah. you do your work in between yeah. and they pay you some money. Yeah. Simples. So like the, the, again, there are pros and cons to both. Cool. It's break time. It is break time. (laughs) We're going to go have a pint. We'll be back in an hour, but it will feel like two minutes.
See you in a sec. <laughs> right, guys, we need to take a moment. Thank our sponsor. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> uh, no, University of Northampton. My God. This show would not be happening right now if it wasn't for them, I don't think. Certainly not to this level. Not to this high quality Not to this quality high quality standard. level. So huge thank you to <laughs> University of Northampton, our old uni. Exactly. So they taught us the ways. <laughs> they taught us the ways of the force. Um, but yeah, no, honestly, like, the thing that I think we love about Northampton Uni over other unis, apart oh. from the fact that we went there, <laughs> right, is the fact... With our limited experience of other universities. With our limited... But, no, but I mean, I know, from, I from know. my perspective... Go wait, ahead. let me finish, let me finish. Zip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the University of Northampton is like... It, it's about their, their whole kind of thing is about social enterprise. So it's not just about going there and getting a degree and leaving and hopefully getting a job. It's about going there, getting your degree, but also learning how to set up not just a business, but a social business. So it's a business that's out there to make good, positive social impact and make good social change. And the university has won so many awards for it. It gets so much recognition in the social enterprise space. Governments are always talking to them and stuff about how they can improve their social enterprise strategy. Honestly, if you're into social enterprise, if you're into possibly setting up a business, these guys are the uni to check out. So if you want to check them out, northampton.ac.uk, check them out. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. So guys, we want to talk to you about New Media Europe. NMEU. (laughs) NMEU. Hashtag. Hashtag NMEU. I love that. Uh, we are so excited for this event. Like, honestly, I don't think we ever thought we would be a new media expo. No. But we're going to be. Yes, we we're are. Gonna be, we're not just going to be there as guests. <laughs> we're going to be there as guests. We're going to be on a panel yeah, on about a, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. And we're going to be hosting the New Media Europe Awards. What's going to happen if we actually win an award? <gasps> Who knows? We will have to. I, you will, I will give you the award, and then you can pass give it back, it back over to, to me, that's and the then one. we'll do it. That's how it will we'll work. We'll figure it out. But yeah, so we're hosting awards. Never thought that was going to happen. And no, we're gonna never thought I was going to be a host. So you're going to have to give me some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you into the the training boot camp. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be there. So uh, tickets are selling quite quick. Very quick. Very actually. quick. I mean, some like, are, some levels are sold out. Some levels are sold out completely. In fact, I believe there's only one type of ticket left. And I think there's only 100 of those type of tickets left. So you got to get on it, right? But if you want those tickets, just have a look. Go to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Check it out. What is NMEU, Wayne? <laughs> you know what, the New Media Expert? Yeah, what is it? Oh, we, we didn't did really... this last time. Did people know New Media Expert? Oh, Maybe just a really little assume. bit. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, the New Media Expert is like it's like a conference type convention type thing for all those people producing new media so podcasts youtubers uh short videos short films documentaries all that sort of stuff so anything to do with like essentially online digital content that's what it's all about it's a big get together it's happening in london uh next month mid-june um, so it's happening we're gonna be there it's gonna be awesome dan miller's gonna be there from 48 days uh, he's like many other specialists in their areas. Yes, many, many, many specialists, including about us. many different things. There's going to be workshops <laughs> about how you can set up your new media businesses and things like that. So much good stuff. Honestly, it's going to be great. It's all on the website to see. To be honest. all on the website. Yeah, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash nmeu. That's our link. Will take you straight to all of the breakdown of what you can expect and a little button to register and buy your tickets. Cool. Check it out. Welcome back. Hello. It's two hours have gone by, but yeah. you'd think it was two minutes. I'm totally pissed. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Had a great meal, played a bit of tennis, ran around the block. You didn't do any of that. You wouldn't even know we didn't do any of that. It's literally been about 30 seconds. We've wasted time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we're talking about entrepreneurial FOMO mm-hmm. and kind of the fact that this entrepreneurial thing is on the rise. Going mainstream. Going mainstream. Um, we actually had an interesting conversation earlier yes. before we started recording this episode about how some people aren't ready for entrepreneurship and they've got their own issues that they've got to deal with. 
<laughs> and their own baggage that yeah. that I think sometimes it can come under the, you can end up having this vision of oh if only I had that freedom or if I had my own business it would solve my problems yeah um, and we're here to tell you <laughs> that that might not necessarily be the case it could be but it probably won't yeah I think the glamorous nature of entrepreneurship is dangerous in a sense that people think that I th- actually I'm going to just start something else the first thing that I think is that when people are in a job, mm-hmm. what it does is that you're so busy that you can hide and you have a great excuse for why you can't do everything. So uh-huh. I, I can't find a good partner because I haven't got time. I'm so busy. Mm-hmm. I can't think about saving because the cost of it. And so I think a lot of the time, nine to five kind of like gives you an excuse for why you're fucking up or maybe you're not mm-hmm. meeting those needs that you have. And so when entrepreneurship comes along, you're thinking, okay, now I've got, maybe entrepreneurship will allow me to have all these things. Maybe once I've got that freedom, if I had that freedom, then I could probably get that partner. Mm-hmm. If I had a business, if I was earning lots of money, had a good car, then maybe someone would like me. And I think the dangerous part is, is that I've known from, I've met so many entrepreneurs who you, it's really bad to say, but you meet them and then you're just kind of like, you can see they're kind of like hurt. Like you can see that this uh-huh. means so much and the business means so much to them. It's literally become that person yeah. to the point that actually without it, they don't know who they are. And they're hoping that success in their business might actually bring them success in their life. And mm-hmm. I think that's the problem people have. Again, if the business becomes something to hide the fact that you don't yeah. actually have a life or maybe you don't have close friends or you don't have a relationship that you want or you're not spending enough time with family. And like we are so kind of like on that kind of idea that actually we want to have businesses that that mean that we can live the lives we want so we can mm-hmm. be around our friends, our family. We've got enough to survive. We're happy. We can eat good food. And I think a lot of the time, like I say, if you've got that baggage, you're hoping that your business is going to get rid of all your problems. And I think it's a really dangerous way to go into Definitely. entrepreneurship because... Yeah. <laughs> if anything, know. it exacerbates the problems sometimes. It like does. Like the, well, <laughs> I haven't got time. Well, you're not going to have more time as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. It's just you have more control of your time it doesn't mean you're going to have more of it Mm -hmm. because you're actually particularly when you start you're going to be working at every god-given moment because you you need to get your business off the ground and so then you know you're not going to necessarily meet someone because actually entrepreneurship can be a lonely business particularly if you're on your own you haven't got a team around you Mm -hmm. so you're going to feel even more lonely you are going to be initially unless your idea takes off straight away and you've got Mm -hmm. this massive massive billion dollar idea that overnight which never happens anyway you're going to be broke at the beginning so you're not going to have enough money to go out and meet someone or whatever like it's going to exacerbate the problems first yeah and if you can't like you're not going to have that overnight success it's just not going to happen yeah i think that and i'm thinking about it like just now it came to my head like obviously with the nine to five becomes the reason to procrastinate on everything else that you want to do in life i think sometimes entrepreneurship can be that you think well actually if i just go to work on a business and i start creating a business then everybody knows that people with businesses are so busy haven't got time stuff then it means that you don't have to work on the shit Mm -hmm. that actually matters and so you you go into business you take yourself out of the world i've got friends who just disappear for months and you're like i haven't seen you what's been going on because they've suddenly gone into their own world and the business has taken over they've been overwhelmed with the business Mm -hmm. and then that's the excuse like i'm just doing so much i've got so much on at the moment changing this changing that i'm sorry and then suddenly that's it you think wow you you've become the business there's you've you've neglected all the life around you Mm -hmm. and it's really dangerous way to be and i think that's what you have to be careful as well like if you're going to get into entrepreneurship don't think that it's going to solve those sort of internal issues like it is there to serve your life but you kind of need to put in the work to build Mm -hmm. your life first so that you can have that business then supplements it really Mm -hmm. yeah i think we covered a lot on that part there i don't think we need to go into that too much more but But just to just to highlight it will not be the be all and end all of solving your problems yes i mean don't get me wrong there's a big journey to go on and it it does improve you as a person yeah if you're open to it yeah but it's not going to solve the problems no Go for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> therapy. Um, okay, so we talked about like some of the advantages and maybe why not being an entrepreneur is a good idea. We've talked about the baggage. Uh, let's talk about then the potential for opportunity. Yeah, I think I think it's quite important. I mean, we had an infographic on the website. I don't know if we've still got it on there, but we did a little bit of research on some of the stats. And you can just see that, you can see it now in the workforce, a lot of it is moving towards mm-hmm. freelance. People are taking control of 
their businesses or becoming freelancers and then actually then getting business from um, yeah getting their work from other bigger businesses and i think in nature we can actually see already in the economy that people are moving towards this more entrepreneur uh-huh. entrepreneurial way of living you keep seeing like posts coming up on like forbes and business insider about this office is now doing this and they're letting their employees work from home and mm-hmm. they can travel and then they can They've got take a foosball table the foosball table they can <laughs> they can take as much holiday as they want or they can take Fridays off and I think what is happening is obviously we're seeing that I think businesses are realizing that actually this entrepreneurial lifestyle is quite appealing and then Mm -hmm. they're worried about their employees and so they are being forced to shift the way they think about employment Mm. to be very entrepreneurial and I think we've done a post on this as well and I think these shifts are happening because I think our natural state is entrepreneurial yeah i think we've become so far away from it having these sort of regimented industrial sit here do your work go mm-hmm. home i think as we become more conscious the internet is making us a lot more conscious in how we want to live uh-huh. i think employers are seeing you know what we cannot treat these people like robots they mm-hmm. aren't robots they're humans and so the entrepreneurial way of living works that way you go uh-huh. out you hunt you get your money you sell your service you go home and you live again yeah and i think we've gone so far away from it that i think it's kind of forced employment Mm -hmm. but also woke people up in in general public Uh to realize actually entrepreneur is probably our natural state yeah well i think what's happened is if you if you look at it is we had the small businesses in the little villages the you had the bakery the butchers the grocers the the candlestick maker maker, (laughs) yeah yeah that's the one (laughs) (laughs) um and and everybody kind of had their businesses and they kind of uh, they worked hard but Mm -hmm. they they were in control of their own lives, the farmers and all that sort of stuff. And then the Industrial Revolution happened and then we got into this system, this, you know, uh, uh, conveyor belt system of like, well, you do that bit, you're, and the cogs in the machines. And then we realised we needed more cogs in the machines. So then we created the school system and we created cogs in the machines. And then because there were so many cogs in the machines, we could make, make these big machines and these big massive companies came into being and they, they took over the world. Mm-hmm. And so then... As time went on, individual employees started being treated not like individual employees, but as cogs in a machine. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of completely took all the humanity out of it. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's worked for a big, big organization will probably tell you, you know, oh, well, they don't really listen to us. They don't think about what us. They're just thinking about business and all that sort of stuff. Bottom line. (laughs) Bottom line, exactly. And so then what's happened is then the Internet's come along and everybody's gone... But wait, that means that I can actually, I don't have to be a cog in the machine anymore. So they've taken themselves out and now they've got this, again, this, they're going to have to work hard, but they can have control of their own lives. And we've kind of gone backwards. We went Mm -hmm. so far into the cog in the machine system that everybody's been completely disillusioned from the whole thing and has now kind of taken ownership again. And the internet's allowed that to happen. Yeah, and I think that's why now we're having to retrain people to think entrepreneurially because mm-hmm. we were the same, didn't know it was possible, thought I could only work nine to five for someone and right. now we're kind of re-embracing those skill sets and I think that's why people are now having that fear of missing out because they are thinking, wait, this feels right, this feels uh-huh. like it is a good life to lead and I think that is why people are being like turned on to entrepreneurship really. Mm-hmm, definitely, and and again, when you look at the big organisations and the way that they're... In fact, I, I read a, a study, re, well, I say read the study... <laughs> I saw the headline, um, which is... Says it that, shows the distraction in people nowadays. <laughs> like, all I've got time for is, is the, the headline. headline right? um, <laughs> no, I was in rehearsal at the time and I saw it come up on my phone. But it was um, that six a six-hour workday is much more conducive to productivity and well-being. Mm-hmm. And yet, so many big companies, until recently, in fact, it's still going on yeah. for a lot of companies that are very out of touch, are ex- expecting 10-hour workdays yeah. now. It's not nine to five anymore. It's eight till six or, you know, whatever. Um, Whereas actually the research is showing that actually the short bursts are conducive to more productivity. And any entrepreneur worth their weight in gold could tell you that. Mm -hmm. Like every entrepreneur knows, particularly if they've worked on their own, you're going to get about two or three solid hours of focus work at best. Yeah. Then you need to take a break. Yeah. And then another two or three hours, if you can manage it, of really solid, productive work. And then the rest, you may as well just not bother because you're burnt out by that point yeah. for the day. Like, I think any entrepreneur could tell you that. And yet, the big businesses are kind of going, well, this and this and this and this and this. We want this, we want that, we want this. Oh, it's the same thing with the, the, going back to the old sort of hunting mentality. You don't do it for 10 hours a day. You go <laughs> hunt, you make your money, you sell your service, you come home and then you reap the rewards. Yeah. It's kind of, 
we're not made that way. And I just think that, yeah, it's this consciousness that's kind of making us think, well, actually, I don't want to be that robot. And then they think, well, actually, well, if you guys don't want to be a robot, we'll send it abroad and let the people right. be the robots until you guys, well, you guys manage, I don't know how it changes, uh-huh. but it's kind of, you're seeing that happening. Yeah. But I think what's interesting, going back to the kind of the local businesses, is back then, before the Industrial Revolution came in, what was what was valuable was those individual skills um, that nobody else could do because you were the one in the village that did it. Yeah. Um, and, and and that kind of disappeared for a while because then yeah. the big businesses came along and you had the cog in the machine. Well, now they were the only people that you could get that thing from. <laughs> right. And now we're going back to this place where people, we've got so many menial jobs, which so many people are trained to do, that actually these individual skills, and, and basically as what I'm trying to say is as one business then sits alone and separates itself and go we do this they then need somebody with other skills to then do the other bits mm-hmm. that they can't do so then another small business comes into the network and it yeah, yeah. slots in and so what's starting to happen is we get in these small kind of bubbles of mini economies yeah but rather than being geographically based it's kind of internet based so basically it's just whoever you end up going to and then they become part of like we've I'm sure if we ever needed more design work on a logo, we'd probably use the same guy we used last time because we got a good relationship with him. You come to me for your content if ever you need voiceover work mm-hmm. because I'm in that little bubble. And so we've got these all these sort of digital villages that are cropped up and everybody kind of goes to those same sort of people. So um yes, you your hard work is gonna be there when you start your, your business, but actually you're probably gonna be able to rely on those the small businesses of the world always used to rely on their regulars. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to end up with those regulars again that are going to be providing you constant work. And then it's about trying to find those other clients. So there's so much opportunity out there. And if you just... Yeah, I think especially on a local level, I think now obviously technology is there, but I've just been finding I'm getting more and more actual customers or clients who are in the area, literally oh, just really? because of proximity. Oh, I suppose it makes so, sense. So like you yeah. say, if you're the only vi- uh, video guy in the village and <laughs> and two other guys in the village go to you regularly, then suddenly speak and you get known in that space. But yeah. uh, And I know Seth Godin spoke about that a lot and like, entrepreneur entrepreneurialism based on proximity, which I think is a great opportunity now. But like you say, you've also opened up that global economy. But I do think when it when we break it all down, it literally comes down to that trust and relationship is the first. You don't have to be the best, but if people trust you and they like you, then uh-huh. you're pretty much in there. Yeah. So you are going to have to, if you do decide to go into the entrepreneurial thing, what I'm trying to say is you're not going to be able to sit on, on your laurels. You are going to have to go out there and put your name out there. But when you do manage to get some really strong, good, authentic relationships, that will be when you start to reap the rewards, which is why entrepreneurship going back to what we said earlier it's not going to solve all your problems because if you're shit with people like and that's your problem you've got all these social issues like you're not going to be able to just set up a business and it's all going to go away you're going to have to work on yourself you're going to have to work with the way that you deal with people Mm -hmm. Um, that's one thing i've really had to learn like is is (laughs) how i interact with people and i think i've definitely calmed down in the way that i was no yeah i I'd like to think because I've do, I've done the work. I've not just gone. Oh, I'm an entrepreneur now, so it's fixed. I've had to go identify the problems and, and work on them. I just want to sort of like round up this episode by saying I think if you are somebody who's out there and you're listening and you're thinking maybe yeah I am suffering from entrepreneurial FOMO, maybe is that that's a good wake up call. Maybe you see a better life for yourself. Maybe you see mm-hmm. an opportunity. And I think Gary V just keeps banging home like you do have the opportunity nobody had this opportunity a few years ago we have it now Mm -hmm. we can do this we can become entrepreneurs we can work on our terms and it can be fun and you can have the lifestyle you want so if anything maybe seeing people sometimes can be a good thing it just wakes you up to see that actually things can change you can be in control of your life you can be reliable on yourself you can be accountable to yourself and so for me like yeah it doesn't matter if you are suffering from entrepreneurial FOMO then do something about it. Start something. Try something out. Listen to the last episode we just did. Mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, it, it happens if you... And I think for some people, it's just making sure that you're doing it for the right reasons, really. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, that was nice. It was nice. Good. Felt like a you were a rally, political rally. Yeah, let's do we this. We can do this. You can. Viva la revolution. It is Entrepreneur Revolution. Good book, Daniel Priestley. Nice. Check like what out. you did there. Uh, yeah, so... I think we'll wrap it up there. Yes, you got a nice it. little motivational pitch from Jem there. So <laughs> I think that's a good place to 
to end. So thanks very much for tuning in. As always, uh, if you're listening on the podcast, head on over to iTunes, leave us a nice review, five stars or more, as always, would be lovely. Um, if you want any show notes and stuff, by the way, any links to anything that we talked about, because I think we talked about a few mm-hmm. things, powerfulmonsters.com forward slash 114. For Which I actually episode. need to set up those links because sometimes I slack. <gasps> <gasps> but I will. I will get on it. See? 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 Too much, too much chilling out. Too much chilling. See? He doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> um, and also, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Hit those fun th- thumbs up. Thumbs up. No, thumbs up. Hit the thumb up. Thumb up. Uh, yes. You know what I mean. Uh, hit that because we just want to get this sort of message out to as many people as we can. You can have the life you want on your terms. Though. <laughs> Don't know what that was. <laughs> Uh, anyway. anyway, I'm not that cool. So, uh, see you later, guys. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.